if you're like me, you probably have a couple projects just like this one. They've been sitting on a breadboard so long that um, when you go check your breadboard collection, none of them are empty. So today we're going to fix that. And we're going to fix that with a PCB from PCBWay. I also love making the PCB because that also gives me a chance to double, you know, uh, to rethink my design and start adding features. So I will show you the type of features I am adding. Oh, hello. Okay, it's apparently their seventh anniversary. There's a Christmas card here type thing. Uh, December 15th to 31st more discount on PCB prototypes. Well, I'm not sure how you can discount it much more. I mean, this thing, this is only $5 plus the uh, shipping. And the PCB Way pen. All right. I will honestly, uh, I'll tell you that um, the one fault with these PCB Way pens are the, uh, the caps split and don't hold on tight anymore, but they write phenomenally. They're almost like a pilot pen. Um, but they're, they don't have felt. They have a, you know, a ball tip. All right, so this is the project. And I'll show you where the improvements have been made. First of all, I reworked my logo, my silk screening logo. So that's pretty nice. I'm going to give you a close-up look at that very shortly. But this is it. So uh, this guy should fit on here. Uh, the screen should fit on here. The INA 219 uh, should fit on here. I put some solder pads and a place to put uh, some uh, screw terminals. And yeah, let me get you a little bit closer. We'll take a look at this board and I'll show you the improvements I have made. So here it is up close. And uh, this is the improvement I want to show you. So first of all, I have solder pads, V in and ground. This is only limited by the um, regulator on the DigiSpark. Um, I have a broken out pad for five volts, so we can actually chain some more accessories to this because we have the five volts. Then I also broke out all of the pins on the bottom of the DigiSpark here. I feel like it's really important that um, a project like this, which doesn't use nearly um, all the capabilities of a microcontroller, I think it's important for me to be able to uh, access those pins to make changes in the future. I also added these 4.7k ohm pads, which are pull-ups, and that's for the I squared C line. Um, apparently it's best practice to put these in. I believe that one of the modules, I think the, the GY219, does put those pull-up resistors, but I put it in in case they don't have it. I also put here two solder pads and then the screw terminals here. The screw terminals is how we're going to get the um, the current measurement, but um, you see the GY219 has these little sort of pin headers where the current comes in and out of. I think that's not a high current path enough, so I added these uh, pads so I can actually put wire from uh, the, the module itself to here. So we'll have a lot less resistance than these pads, even though these pads are a lot thicker than the standard pads. If I flip this around, you'll see there's not much here. There's the through holes for um, a switch. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you that. So I put a switch position here, and that's because I will try to code some new code for this uh, so that when you click this, you can switch what the display is actually displaying. So wish me luck on that one. And here we go. This is the silk screen. Now I was worried about the silk screen logo because on my CAD package on KiCad, it didn't look great, but I'll tell you, it looks pretty damn good. Like here's my, you know, my finger for scale. This thing is absolutely tiny and I can still read simple electronics on here. So they did a really good job in silk screening that pretty nice. And then here that that's the, um, tracking number for the project for the for the PCB on PCB ways side so the one negative thing I will say though about um, digi sparks is that the micro USB version and the one with the little broken out tab uh, this guy here 
they use different footprints. Um, I believe the one with the micro USB, everything here is shifted up one. So you'll need the one with the uh, USB tab in order to use this board. Link in the description, by the way. Let's put this thing together. I think I've gathered all the parts I need. I also swapped the pins on this DigiSpark. They used to be standing up and now they are pointing down. And what I'll do is I'll put these all in headers. Being a YouTuber, uh, I'm always crunching at the last second to uh, get a part I need that I didn't think I needed. And uh, sometimes having access to uh, steal from your old projects is important. Now let's see if I did this properly. If I did, this will fit. It does fit. It sits quite high, however, because of that. Um, but yeah, so these three pins, I've had uh, some three pin uh, female uh, pin headers. But for these uh, six pins, I had to, and, and four pins and whatever, I had to custom cut some out of a long strip. So that that's why they look ugly. It has nothing to do with... Um, yeah, anything else. Just looks ugly because of that. So I put them, put the actual device in first and then secure it um, because, or else you can get the alignment wrong. And now this is the hard part, the part of holding your part on the bottom side here and trying to solder it in at the same time. That's uh, extremely difficult, but we shall try nonetheless. So I'm just holding the roll in my palm and I will bend the um, solder down so it touches. And then I'm just going to tack this. Uh, I'm going to press hard so it all lines up. Just going to give it a little tack here. As long as a couple of pins stay in there. That's all I will need. I'm going to do it again over here. And then it should hold after that. Here it goes. There we go. We can go back over and solder those after, which is what I will do. So hopefully that was in shot and in focus. I am getting a little bit better at this YouTube thing, but sometimes it just fails me. Okay, soldering is kind of ugly, but it is there. Next one up is going to be our OLED. Uh, now, notice I have not soldered in the uh, 4.7K resistors here because I'm not sure they're necessary. Uh, we can check that out because basically if the I squared C works, it works. It's a digital signal, it's either it works or it doesn't kind of thing. Okay, now this is going to be a pain in the butt as well. Uh, but actually this one only has one header, so I should be able to just pop that in. I don't think I need anything special for alignment or anything. I'll just try to hold it so it's straight. And here is the final product. Um, the lights are dim because uh, I have to show you what's going to be on this OLED, which is quite dim compared to my overall lighting. The software on this actually is an Instructables uh, project by Chen Liang, and that is uh, linked in the description below. But I was only able to get it work uh, with the help of Moritz from the NV YouTube channel. This is the same Moritz and the same NV YouTube channel I had on the podcast. Check out the links in the description below. Uh, the link to the Instructable will be there as well. And Moritz helped me because uh, the DigiSpark default library wasn't good. It didn't leave enough space on the ATtiny in order to upload this code. So 
I will also link the updated library that Moritz had found for me. He helped me quite a lot, and you guys should go subscribe to his YouTube channel. That being said, the rest over here, uh, these this is one of the lithium rolls uh, sent over by a kind viewer. Uh, and this is just plugged in because I thought this would be the most interesting way to display this project. So I've got a alligator clip here linking the ground of the battery to the ground of the project. This is quite standard. I got a uh, broken iPhone or iPhone USB cable uh, soldered to the 5 volts and the ground here. And the button is not implemented because my coding skills isn't good enough to do what I wanted to do. But I did solder it in anyway. So I'm going to plug this in, and the first thing we should be able to see is the OLED boot up after the bootloader does its thing. So there we go. That is showing us about 3.5 volts. That is the voltage of the cell here. Now, when we plug this in, we should see it's going to start charging. So here we go. Plugging this in, it should start charging. There you see the bar graph went up. So the voltage is going up climbing slowly and the current is about one amp you see about a thousand milliamps I can't read from this far but that's about what it says there so that's charging and then this will slowly work its way up as we go so you can see how a project like this would be quite useful to have just in general on the bench to check voltage and current of devices it even counts up the time and gives us the uh, accumulated capacity pretty good. And what happens when we draw a load? Well, I don't know. Let's find out. It should give us negative readings if I read the code properly. So this is actually going through the protection circuitry here. So let's see if it draws more than an amp. I kind of doubt it. So there it is coming on dim. And it did drop the current going in. So some of the current going into this is actually going into the bulb, if you can see it's lit there, instead of charging the battery. And if I remove this, we should have an entirely negative charge. There we go. Yeah, we got negative uh, 183 milliamps because uh, 183 milliamps is going into the bulb here. So everything works perfectly. So I think you should make yourself one of these, uh, but if you do, there's a couple things you got to keep in mind. Uh, you're going to need an OLED with this pin arrangement, ground, VCC, SCL, and SDA in that order. You're going to need a DigiSpark with uh, the little USB plug up top. If you have one of the square ones with the uh, micro USB, I will make a second board. So down in the description on PCBWay's website, I will release the two board revisions, um, one for the one with the little uh, fingers, the other one for the micro USB. Um, there might be a way to do it with just the AT Tiny, but not the way I've set up my board right now. So let me know if you find this project useful. I want to give a special thank you to the uh, author of the Instructables article, a special thank you to Moritz of the MV YouTube channel for helping me out. A uh, special thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Thanks for watching.